Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. You're watching Sisty Cycle Hum, and I'm back at it with my big brand budget battle shootouts. This is number four in the series where I shoot out pedals from JHS's three series, Fender's Hammer Tone line, and Gibson's Maestro line. This time is overdrive. So the first video was fuzzes, and then I did delays, and then choruses, and then after overdrives, I'll do distortions, and that'll be it. Huge thanks, by the way, to Sweetwater for searching me with the pedals that I didn't have and making this video possible. So what do we have? We've got two overdrives from JHS. We've got their Screamer, which is obviously a Tube Screamer style pedal. We have their Overdrive. We have the Fender Hammertone Overdrive, and we have the Maestro Ranger Overdrive. I'm gonna run into the two Princeton's rig. And I'm gonna use my Fender Player Plus Strat because this is an excellent guitar for this sort of video. Great sounding single coils and a humbucker in the bridge. And it's nice and tuning stable. And I just like playing it. So that's all you really need to know. <laughs> Here is my clean signal. Clean, 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 clean. I'm not trying to trick anyone with overdriven mm -hmm. amps or anything like that. Just crystal clean. But later in the video, I am gonna turn on the Tone King and the Black Star back there to give you a taste of what these pedals sound like hitting an amp that is dialed in, kind of edge a breakup, a little bit crunchy, a little bit more saturated, because I think that'll be a fun and useful experiment and example of what these pedals can do. So let's get into it. First one is the JHS 3 Series Screamer. It's got volume, tone, and drive, and a little toggle switch here. It gives you an option in between uh, symmetric and asymmetric. Let's pull up the manual and make sure I'm getting the details correct. Toggle changes the clipping. Up is asymmetrical clipping, which is the strong mod clipping. It's a modified two screamer sort of sound. Down is symmetrical clipping, stock TS9 and TS808 style. All right, so let's start with it down for the stock Tube Screamer sort of sound. Let's check out that asymmetric set. Got a little bit more heat to it, doesn't it? compressed mid heavy sound on the lower setting, more open and bright and louder sound on the up setting. Let's check out the range of some of these knobs. You might notice that on both the JHS pedals, I have the tone controls down pretty far. <laughs> these two pedals get really, really, really bright. It's a bit shocking how bright they get. Let's check out the range of the gain first. Lots of gain on that screamer. <laughs> Try it in the up position and work our way back through the drive.
little spicy in the mix here. <laughs> pickups and try it on the neck pickup. If you're shopping for a tube screamer, you've got to hear it on a strap neck pickup. That's it's mandatory. It's not an option, right guys? See what I mean? All right, let's check out the range of that tone control now. I already teased that. It's already super super bright with the tone pretty far down. Let's take it all the way out. I honestly think the tone control on this and this only serve to make the signal brighter. There's no darkening happening here. It's just, you start there and then it just gets brighter and brighter and brighter. That's spicy. That's why I keep it down pretty low. All right, let's move on to the overdrive, which is not a tube screamer. It's an overdrive, but not a tube screamer. It's got volume, body, drive and then a two-way switch. Let's pull up the manual to make sure I get the details on that switch correct. Gain toggle gives you two options for different gain types. Down is more saturated and compressed with slightly lower volume. Up is more open and crunchy with higher volume. Bright, bright, bright. Let's try it on the humbucker. down position really helps pull back that really peaky bright thing that's happening with this overdrive. All right, let's check out the range of the drive control now. cleans up like all the way without gain down. It changes the EQ a bit when you turn it on, but yeah, there's really no gain there. Pretty nice to me. 
Now that's a sound that I'd find myself using. I fudged that one up. All right, let's just max it out. of that body control. This is a tone control and also changes the gain character a bit. It was almost all the way down, now it's all the way down. That is like cartoonish levels of bright. And that's on the down setting. The up setting is less compressed and less squished. And so I imagine that's just gonna be just pure ice pick into your brain. this one to that one simply because I'm not really a Tube Screamer fan, but this one does the Tube Screamer sound and it gives you a mod sound. This one just, I, I resonate with that down setting quite a bit more, but the brightness of both of these seems really over the top to me. Unless you're running a really, really dark amp or a rig that's dark in other ways, I'm not sure what they're going for. <laughs> with the amount of brightness that's on tap with those two drives. So let's get into the Fender Hammer Tone Overdrive now. This one's interesting because all the other pedals in these lines have three knobs and a switch. This one ditches the switch and gives you a pre-mid boost. What I've noticed with this is that the tone control and the pre-mid boost both seem to be before the clipping. So it's not filtering your overdrive after the clipping, it's pushing into the overdrive different with different kind of EQ characteristics. Okay. This is with the gain all the way down right now. kind of this quacky, like honky sort of sound to it. Let's bring up the gain about 
about halfway and start exploring the tone controls. I'm going to roll that mid boost all the way back. The tone is all the way up right now. these two it feels like this should be a lot brighter than it is but i think it's a normal range of tone control in there <laughs> This one might just be darker. So I'm gonna crank that tone all the way up again. We'll use the mid boost. Let's do it on the neck pickup. That's a low straight jacket song. I messed it up, but I think that's where I'm getting that from. Start with a mid boost all the way down again. About halfway. All the way up. Try it with some cording, leave it all the way up. Bring the tone down a bit, about halfway. Interesting control, having that pre-mid boost. It kind of fattens it up on one side or sucks out the mids and gives you more classic kind of like hollow sound on the other side. Yeah, interesting. What do you guys think about that? On to the Maestro Ranger Overdrive. This one is the odd man out. These all have this kind of bright, high mid sort of thing going on in their EQ characteristics. And I find this to be a lot more smooth and even and not nearly as high gain as these other three. Did I even, I didn't even explore the range of the gain. <laughs> On the Fender, I think I stopped about halfway through. All right, let me, Cover the range of the Fender hammer tone real quick. So that's all the way down. Here it is midway. And here it is all the way up. And here it is on the humbucker. and honky sounding. On to the Maestro Ranger Overdrive. I've already made big promises about it sounding kind of even and smoother, lower gain. I think just less raunchy. I'll say that. Oh. I 
like it. I actually really like the Ranger Overdrive. I've been bonding with it in the time that I've spent prepping for this video. I think this is my personal pick out of this lineup. I just connect with it. I haven't even shown you the range of its sounds, but we're on the high gain setting right now. The gain is right about there. Let's try rolling it all the way back. Really, nothing worth writing home about on the low gain setting. There's something about the EQ of it too. It just feels more balanced to me. It might not be the best choice if you're using it to hit a dirty amp. You might want that more honky, bright, high nasal sort of thing that these other three pedals give you. But the way I run overdrive pedals into very clean amps, to me, it this just lands where I like to land sonically with overdrive pedals. <laughs> setting it's sweet it's got this really sweet syrupy but pretty sort of sound to it pleasantly surprised by a lot of the pedals in the Maestro line. They didn't phone it in. But with the Maestro line, I, I think they I think they did a really good job on the vast majority of them. I remember liking the Fender delays better than the Maestro, but the chorus I liked a lot, the fuzz I liked a lot. I think the fuzz I was in between the Maestro and the JHS, as far as personal preference goes. I should put together a little board with my favorites from this series. It's just a really nice, like, slightly dirty, but more like saturated sort of sound. It has this nice, warm, lower, mid kind of thing going on. It's a little bit like a honk to it, but not nearly as honky. going on with the gain down low here.
nice normal range on that tone control. Not too dark, not too bright. Gives you decent control over your tone. Yeah, for me, this is the one. This is the one that I would pick as the one that I was that I would buy if I was shopping for these. I already have them all, so I'm not shopping for them. <laughs> I guess from my perspective, I'm deciding which one I would keep long term. How about that? What do you guys think? Did you have a preference in between these four? Did you prefer the brighter classic sounds of the Screamer or the Overdrive? Do you prefer the interesting mid-boost qualities of the Hammer Tone? Or do you prefer the smoother, lower gain, but more evenly EQ'd Ranger Overdrive? I am going to turn on the other amps now to test out these pedals going into dirty amps and I'm going to turn on the AC and go change my shirt because I, it is hot in this garage. I don't know if you know this, but it's the, it's summertime and the living is sticky. It is sweaty in here. <laughs> Sorry to gross you out, but that's the reality of it. I'm back. The air has cooled down a little bit. <laughs> I've changed my shirt for a drier one and I've got the other amps on. I've got the Tone King on and I have the, where is it? The Black Star St. James behind me, which I still need to do a full video of. I need to do a demo of that amp because it's a cool amp and there's a lot of cool things about it. But I've got them both dialed in to be pretty crunchy right now. I'm on the bridge pickup and here is the St. James. <laughs> Here is the Tone King. Different styles of amps, different styles of overdrive. For fun, let's see how they combine. Also, I've got a splash of reverb on each one. This is more of like how I would dial in a pedal and amp with reverb sort of relationship if I was playing them live. Just one pedal, one amp sort of situation. Here's both of them together. So much fun. It's something that happens a lot on like live stages and in studios and stuff like that, but we don't do it enough at home. We should be mixing amps at home because it's great. You don't just make a peanut butter sandwich, you make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You combine things, right? <laughs> Let's try it on the neck pickup. One amp at a time. Tone King, and here is the St. James. Back to the Tone King. Now let's try to dial in one sound on the two screamer and then go between the two amps and then do both of them at the same time. There's so many possibilities as far as combinations go here that I'm not gonna even be able to scratch the surface of everything that I could do. what it wants. It wants the volume up and the gain down. Let's 
let's try it into the black star now. And not surprisingly, it feels like the black star wants something else. <laughs> I wanted the volume down a bit. It's really, really bright. Or it feels like the Tone King sucks up that brightness a little bit better. Both of them on now. great to me honestly let's try it with the overdrive here's just the tone king Black Star. Now bright, 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 bright. Here they are together. Both amps. <laughs> On to the fender. That was the Tone King. Here is the Black Star. Interesting. Those amps have very different tastes when it comes to this overdrive. The Tone King is getting really dark, really mid-heavy, where the St. James is still kind of mid-scoop sounding. And I don't have the mid-scoop, that's just the voice of the amp. But brighter and more hollow, where the Tone King has this really thick, rich, dark mid-quality to it. Let's see what they sound like combined together. <laughs>
type of amp you're using matters. It really does. There's There's been other channels, and I'm sure Steve and I have talked about this on the podcast, but there's been other channels like uh, like Brian Wampler's channels and, and uh, guys like that who have pointed out, they're like, you don't have the same amp. You don't play the same way. You don't have the same guitar as a person on YouTube. The pedal you get is not going to sound the same as them. You don't have the same speaker in the same amp with the same guitar, with the same fingers as the YouTuber. The product you get is going to sound different in a lot of ways. And just the balance between these two different amps shows, <laughs> shows that really well. They take this overdrive in completely different ways. Very interesting. Moving on to the Ranger Overdrive into the Dirty Amps. That was a Tone King. Here is the Black Star. And both of them. tremolo on the Tone King really quick just to see what would happen and it sounded beautiful. That's what happened. Do that again. <laughs> and turn them all on. time did you learn anything do you have opinions for him now because you watch this video which of these pedals would you buy if you had to choose if you were in the market right now to pick an overdrive out of this selection what would you go with I'd go with that I feel pretty strongly about that I, I connect with that one quite a bit more than the others I find this one to be a bit on the muddy side I find these to be 
bright, 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 bright. Sometimes you want that. Sometimes you need that. You want to boost like bright, hot, razor sharp overdrive and dirt and gain into a darker sort of signal. Well, there you go. Those two will do it. The twins, we'll call them. Jeez Louise, they're bright. But yeah, had a good time. Playing through overdrives isn't really my strong suit. There's other channels that can do a much better job of that than me. But I feel like I learned something along the way. I hope you did as well. Huge thanks to Sweetwater for sourcing me with these pedals and making this video possible. Stay tuned for the next one, the last one, as far as I'm aware, the Distortion Shootout. Uh, I'll have a distortion from all three of these brands. It's interesting to think about these being big brand budget pedals for the big brand budget battle. Overdrives, you can get in this price range. You know, there's a lot of overdrives out there in that $100-ish sort of price range. So these aren't really budget compared to a lot of other stuff that's on the market, especially if you're looking at tube screamers and stuff like that. But what's interesting to me, I should have said all this at the beginning, what's interesting to me is that these all come from these big lines that came from these pedal manufacturers. They're not individual standalone pedals. They came from lines that were all launched at the same time relatively. So yeah, interested to read everyone's comments. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, just like, leave me rude, and as you comment, support us on Patreon. Buy a shirt if you're naked. And you know what? Stay grounded. Bye, everybody.